Hello and welcome back. So this is the Gila, the Guristas Pirate Faction Cruiser. I've heard a lot about this ship, a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. And well, I decided to test the ship out for myself to see if I like it. Overall, a ship that has very good bonuses on drones, very good bonuses on missiles. It uses both weapon systems. And well, at first, before I bought the Phantasm, I initially wanted to go for a Gila, but I did choose a Phantasm, and after the Phantasm I went with a Cinnabal, and well, now I finally got my hands on a Gila, so it will be interesting to see what I'll be able to do with this ship. This ship generally looks like a MOA, and of course it is almost exactly the same with the Guardian MOAs, the only difference is the ship's overall skin. It looks very nice. I like the camouflage. Most of these faction cruisers very, have a very, very good design. And of course, you have this event skin that's also available. It is also quite expensive, around 300 million isk. Now, on to the ship characteristics. Roll bonus will give you plus 200% medium drone damage, plus 200% medium drone EHP. The advanced medium drone operation bonus per level will give you plus 10% medium drone damage, plus 4% plus 4 kilometers, and so far these bonuses are looking good. Advanced cruiser command bonus per level will give you plus 10% missile torpedo kinetic damage, plus 10% missile torpedo thermal damage, and plus 4% shield resistance. Overall, on paper, these bonuses sound and look pretty good. It will be interesting to see how will they perform in real use later on. Now the ship has two drones, four high slots, three medium slots, five low slots, three combat and three engineering rigs. It has quite a decent shield amount with skills you can get that up to 9000, I have 1.5000 I think. A little bit, a little bit less armor and a little bit more hull. Gila is basically a shield tank ship and you should never lose your shield in one of these ships because if you do lose your ship, if you do lose your shield, you lose your ship. And of, and of course the other stats are generally comparable to the other faction cruisers. Now on to the fit that I have on this ship. 656.89 DPS. Now keep in mind, I am still leveling up skills for the missiles and missiles are kind of my weak spot at the moment but very soon I'll, I will be increasing that. C-type medium missile launchers will work pretty good on the ship. Initially I thought about getting rapids but for missions I think the medium missile launchers should perform well. They have more range and overall are pretty good. In the medium slot I have dual webs, one painter. For the drones, things are going to be interesting when the faction drones are released. This ship will truly shine when we get faction drones. At the moment the tier 7 drones are the best you can find. Very soon the tier 7 will be replaced with tier 9. And of course, hopefully after tier 9s we will get faction drones which will indeed improve the DPS of this ship by, by a lot. In all slots there are two invulnerability fields, one reactive, one shield booster and one afterburner. Like I said earlier this is a fit that I made for storylines and of course for missions, not a PvP fit. For PvP I would use either one drone damage amplifier or one ballistic control or both of these modules combined. You can also use a damage control if you want. For the rigs, I have for the combat rigs tier 2 because I am still kind of thinking what to what to put there. For Starlight, I think if I use one EM rig it would help with the resistance, but if I decide to use this ship for PvP then I want to have DPS. So I am quite curious to to know what would you put in the in the rigs for a gila i'm very curious to see if any of you fly the gila and i'm curious to know what your rigs on this ship are because at the moment i'm kind of kind of debating what to what to use 
In the engine rigs I have these prototypes because, like I said, I want to change them when, when the time comes. Now, how will this ship compare with a, let's say, Cinnabal, because currently I have one available. And the Cinnabal is known to have a lot more DPS, it's known to be a, a lot faster as well. So, these two ships are generally very, well, very good in their own way. On the Cinnabal, currently this is my PvP fit, 941 colds, around 1.4 thousand hot DPS. It does outperform the Gila in DPS, but the Gila is outperforming a Cinnabal in the overall tank. And of course, Gila is known to have very good tanking abilities. It is also very good to, to use it in storylines. For PvP, it can work. But I would be thinking twice about engaging a Cinnabal with a Gila in PvP. Because the Cinnabal can shred things to pieces in seconds. And of course, let's quickly simulate the resistance and speed. Of course, because I have no damage amplifier mods currently, the DPS will be the same. The DPS is overall not bad, it's actually pretty nice, should be enough for storylines. The shield resistances are looking pretty good. The reactive, of course, will allocate more resistance points to, uh, to the damage types in actual combat. And 893.14 meters per second velocity. Quite a bit slower than the other ships that I was, that I am flying. And its speed is something that I think I should improve. I mean, I'm not quite, I'm not quite sure if a Gila is supposed to be fast. I think the Gila isn't supposed to be that fast, but so far, so far, I'll see what will happen. And well, time to jump in combat to see how it will perform. As you can see, the reactive did allocate more resistance points towards the incoming damage types, so that's that's good. Fight uh, fighting Amar ships. That means they are mainly doing EM and thermal damage to me. In this case, they are doing EM damage on the shield. And well, I like the alpha damage on this ship, and the drones are definitely hitting a lot. Now, the drone bonus on this ship, this ship only has two drones by the way, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Those two drones with all of these skills and with all of these bonuses are actually working and performing like six drones. So having two drones is not necessarily a bad thing. Back in the beta, when the when this ship was ridiculously overpowered, it had 400% drone damage and 400% drone EHP as a roll bonus. This ship and the worm used to have that bonus, but that was later on fixed to 200 because these ships were ridiculously overpowered. And now they are mostly balanced. Now, I've seen and I've heard a lot of a lot of people saying that a Gila is not a good faction cruiser. Well, uh, so far, I, from my personal experience, I absolutely love this ship. <laughs> it's it's working quite well actually, despite me not having the best of skills for the missiles. But I have very good skills for the drones, so the drones are carrying me here. The only difference again is I don't have faction drones but I have faction missiles so the missiles are going to hit hard. For PvP it will be interesting to test out the rapid missiles and the torpedoes. I think the torpedoes are a are a better choice now because they actually received a buff and the rapids were nerfed a while ago. A while ago. So I am curious to, to test those two weapon systems out. So far, for safety and of course for general storylines and for encounters, I use the normal missile launchers. As you can see so far, this, this battleship is going down quite, quite fast. And in a way, the DPS is actually quite similar to a Cinnabal. The clear time is very similar, despite the Cinnabal having a little bit more DPS. 
With my PvE setup on the Cinnabon I have 848.81 DPS. With this ship I have 200 less and generally I don't I don't see the difference in actual use that much. I definitely see the difference when the Cinnabal starts hitting 3.5 to 4000 per hit, that's where the difference is notable, but in overall average use, and of course for these missions you shouldn't notice a major difference, despite there being a, a slightly big difference between the DPS. Now, I will definitely test this ship out with the drone damage amplifiers and with a ballistic control. With those two modules I think I'd be able to get around 1.2k DPS and at least 850 cold. But I will have to sacrifice a little bit of the resistances. So far, as for a PvE ship, I like the Gila a lot more than I like the Cinnabal. That is mainly because I have 30 plus kilometer range. I can safely orbit without them hitting me at 30 kilometers and I am safe from any from any webs, from any scramblers, from any disruptors. And it's actually quite a quite a pleasant experience flying this ship. Now one area where the missile launchers can show weakness is sh at shooting small fast moving frigates because the frigates can actually be faster than your explosion velocity and that can reduce your DPS. So that's where I have the dual webs in place and the target painter. Now, if I decide to use torpedoes, or if I decide to use rapid missile launchers, I'll definitely replace some of the medium slot modules with a Nosferatu and, of course, maybe even a large Nosferatu. Didn't manage to fit a large shield booster here. A large shield booster can fit in a Cinnabal, but it didn't fit on this Gila. So I might have to either change the fit a little bit, or I might have to add power grid rigs to increase the power grid. I think I, I needed a little bit more than like 50 or 60 more power grid to fit a large shield booster. But if I can't fit a large shield booster, I will go with a large Nosferatu. That way. I'd be able to have literally infinite cap with the medium shield booster always active and of course with all of these resistances always active. With a medium Nosferatu, or not a medium Nosferatu, with a large Nosferatu, this ship can fight with a Ashimu without a problem because you, you will have enough capacitor with a large Nosferatu something that I wasn't able to fit in my Cinnabal. For the Cinnabal, eventually I thought about using dual, or I thought about using two large modules, one large shield booster and one large Nosferatu, because the energy can be a problem. But on this ship, I think I might be able to achieve that fit. I'll have to buy one large Nosferatu, they are not they are not cheap at all, as well as this ship wasn't cheap, so I need to I need to kind of recover myself from the from buying it. And if you're wondering where is the battleship, well um, very soon, very soon, don't worry. There will be there will there will be a battleship, don't worry. It's around the corner. I just have to wait a couple more days and then I can hop in one and well then you can then you can see what I'll be able to do with one of those one of those beasts. But so far, cruisers cruisers are well where the main fun is at. They can do generally everything. And so far, I have been clearing these missions without a problem. And still kind of thinking about the about the rigs. At the current moment, the rigs are doing a good job, I think. 
once I decide what the perfect fit for the ship will be, I will be going for the tier 3 rigs. So that would be that would be fun. Its speed is something I thought might be a problem. I got used to fly ships that go above 1.3 km per second, so it's kind of weird to fly a ship that's going almost 900. But I don't seem to find a problem with the with the velocity on the Gila. I can make it faster, and I I would love to combine the speed tank and the shield tank. That way, this ship would truly be very hard to shoot down. Overall, in tank tank wise, this ship reminds me a lot on a Phantasm. I used to fly the Phantasm. I had an accident with it, so yeah, that ship is no longer no longer in my hangar. But um, so far, this ship does remind me a lot on a Phantasm by the way it performs. Generally. The shield tank is roughly roughly the same. Phantasm has a little bit more shield volume, it has a bonus on shield volume, while this ship has a bonus on shield resistance. And the Phantasm can fit one of these shield field modules that I don't like. The shield field modules are actually re representing more issues than, than it actually helps, so I remember swapping that module out for some group shield boosters because the shield field module actually made your ship more vulnerable to incoming damage than, than it actually helps despite having 90% 90 90 resistance all of these all of, the, all of these NPCs were, be, were able to actually hit you and that kind of could break your tank so I had to swap that module out as for the for the Gila I don't seem to have any issues with that. That ship cannot fit. This ship cannot fit a shield field module, thankfully. So I can use whatever module I like in the medium slots. And so far, as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job. Now, DPS wise, this ship can outperform a Phantasm because you can combine skills, both drones and missiles. So that's kind of a it's kind of a very good thing. With faction drones, the DPS would be a lot higher, actually. I think I would have maybe, and I'm and I'm and I think maybe around 800. So the, the, the DPS is actually pretty similar to a Cinnabal. With added tank. Now, of course, the Cinnabal is the is known for the superior DPS. So. The Cinnabal will always have higher DPS, but the ship will always have higher resistance. And that also can help in PvP. You know, I had a lot of cases where a properly tanked ship survived my attack. And that's one of the things that you can also use for PvP. A properly tanked ship can, in a lot of cases, outperform and kill a ship that's focused purely on DPS because you can easily withstand the incoming damage while your target can't because your target in that case will be focused on solely DPS well so far I've done I think this is my third mission so far and basically I can AFK all of these missions without a problem very enjoyable experience with the with this gila so far i gotta admit i got kind of tired of brawling in the storylines so definitely feels like taking a break from the constant danger of getting swarmed by these npcs by literally being far away from them the drones can have 40 i think 42 kilometers that's actually pretty pretty good and if you want to increase your missile range, I think you can to match the drone range. But I went kind of to increase the drone DPS and to increase the missile DPS. You can also increase the drone damage and increase the missile velocity, explosion velocity and things alike. So that way you can actually destroy frigates fast. Generally speaking, a perfect 
cruiser for for storylines, let's say, and for encounters and for anomalies. This ship can actually be very good in NoSec for NoSec rating because it is super tanky. And a Gila is mostly a solo ship. Of course, being a solo ship doesn't mean that you can't use it in a fleet. You can, the ship can be very good for rating fleets. It can also work for PvP, but I think it would work a little bit better in solo PvP. Of course, you can make it work in fleets if you like. I like to use uh, ships in whichever way possible. And at the moment I'm actually debating if I should use my Cinnabal only for PvP now and to use a Gila for storylines. Because let me tell you, this ship is definitely a lot safer than a Cinnabal for for storylines. And I honestly don't see the reason why people say that this ship is bad. <laughs> I mean I am I absolutely love this ship so far, so no issues with it whatsoever. It is tanky, it is not fast, I admit it is not fast. I like fast ships, but it is not slow either. It can go at a decent velocity and it is more than enough to speed tank in most cases. The DPS is also pretty good. With my current skills I'm actually very impressed by the, by the DPS on the Gila so I can't complain about the DPS on this ship and having both drones and missiles definitely will allow me to do some very interesting fits in the future especially PvP fits now I'll, be, I'll definitely be patient to wait for the faction drones because the ship's full potential is not reached at this moment in the game yet because the faction drones are literally made for this ship and the faction drones will at least give a 30% boost in DPS so that also is a major improvement for this ship and I think the price for a Gila will also increase when the faction drones are released because then you can actually use this ship to its full potential. I think that's literally one of the one of the bad things about this ship. You can't use it to its full potential at the moment because we don't have the drones yet in the game. But overall so far it is doing a pretty damn good job. And next thing that I'll definitely test out are the torpedoes. I remember seeing some battle cruisers that use torpedoes to have very high DPS. Torpedoes were buffed, and I like the I like the buff. And these missiles that I'm currently using also were buffed because they were weak. They were pretty weak compared to the rapids back when the game was quite fresh. Rapid missiles were dominating. Literally, you could see caracals everywhere. You go to Ita and you see a ocean of caracals just sitting around the gate. And I'm glad that they balanced things out because the caracal spawn was was real. And now torpedoes and these normal missile launchers are doing a phenomenal job. So for PvP, I will definitely use torpedoes or well or rapids, but most likely torpedoes. They have very good, they have very good rate of fire, very good, very good DPS, and they are perfect for. For that, of course, they have they have no range. That might be a problem. For example, a Ashimu has range; it can web you from 30 kilometers. And in this case, I have enough range myself to actually hit the Ashimu while I am being webbed. And of course, I have drones. And if I had a large Nosferatu, I'd be able to have a stable tank, so I'd be able to withstand the Ashimu's incoming fire. And the Ashimu isn't exactly a good shield tank, although although I've seen a lot of failed tanks, by the way. And eventually the shield tank on that ship will go down. The point in that case would be to actually withstand all the incoming fire while chipping away your target. 
And I actually did some tests with my corp mates. It did work. So that would be interesting to see. So far, I haven't encountered any any neutral or any red Ashimu. I wish I did though. I wish I did because those would be though that would be my like you know goal to have a kill mail of the Ashimu. Or pretty much any faction cruiser. At the moment, one funny thing. Most of Eve is actually blue to me, so... Well, actually not most. A big chunk is actually blue to, to the cooperation that I'm currently in. So finding targets is becoming a challenge, but don't worry. Don't worry, you know me. I always find targets when, when I look. Well then, uh, the Gila is so far, so far doing a good job. I am glad that I bought this ship. Wish I did buy it sooner, wish I bought it instead of a Phantasm, but it's okay, better late than never, and so far this ship is just as I have expected it to be. I'll definitely tweak out the modules, tweak out the rigs, I'll definitely be listening to your recommendations, what you want to, what would you put or what you use on your Gila. So far that is kind of the only little bit of doubt that I have in my fit, the rigs, because not quite sure what I should put there, to be 100% sure that is, and once I figure that out, this ship would be and will be a beast, a nice addition to my fleet, and a nice cruiser to have, overall there is the Psinabal also doing a good job, and well now we will have the, I'll have a Gila to give me company in Starlines, so that's that's good. That's actually excellent so far. Well then, I hope you enjoyed, and well, so far I am indeed very impressed by the performance of this ship. And with that, be with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.